Hey everybody, the water tank adapters I ordered have arrived. Hopefully, baby don't. Don't, baby cat, no. Stop going. Don't growl at me. The adapters I ordered have arrived and hopefully they'll fit. They came from China and they're supposed to fit the water tanks, the big 275 gallon totes and atta attached to a uh, garden hose. So I'm going to go out and see if they fit. And if they do, then I will put two tanks out in the shed. Obviously, if we have the one tank there already, and hook this up to the house, the uh, off-grid tiny house water supply system. And instead of using a little 20-gallon tank we've been hand filling all this time, which I'm sure will make Melanie happy. So, take that out there in a couple minutes and see how it works. Hey, everybody! I'm hooking up the MPPT solar charge controller. Uh, Renogy that I bought from Prepper Nurse when I was over there and going to hook up the solar panels that are on top of the tiny house on wheels now to this charge controller I have disconnected the solar panels from the charge controller inside the house and set my off grid tiny house on wheels and that way if I disconnect the power I'm trying not to because I don't want to lose the memory and all that stuff but if I happen to disconnect power uh, briefly then it won't cause any trouble is the idea I think I want to put a something up here to run this keep it out of the way and when I'm done, I'm actually going to build a box here in case water ever does sneak through the, the walls, which so far hasn't really happened to this date, but I want to make sure that's safe forever and then some more. So I will put that in a waterproof housing. Um, now Prepper Nurse had this in an unheated shed. At least I think it was unheated. I'm not sure. Sorry Prepper Nurse if you see this and if it is heated. But anyway, my thinking is this. Many people have their battery, their solar charge controller, inside a shed or in an outside type of environment. But this is going to be a heated shed anyway. This is my battery shed and this is where I want this. So, and it's well, well ventilated. So there's no worry about gases um, rising up and being ignited by the charge controller at any given point in time because of the ample vent ventilation inside this battery shed. So that's definitely a good thing. Now, there's the other, the negative terminal. And then I should have power to the Renogy MPPT solar charge controller in a minute here. Oh yes, there it is. Got the battery on. And then it's going to be a matter of hooking up the solar panels in a minute here to the charge controller. Right now I've got to go back out and reconnect the solar panels to the indoor charge controller. So we'll be back in a minute. But I don't know if you can see, we have a green light. Battery is connected. We have power. I just hooked up the solar panels on the roof of the off-grid battery bank shed and look at this we've got a happy charging light PV green light actually it's a yellow green light I wonder what the colors mean charging over voltage charging okay cool so there's charging batteries in the green but that's not uh, anything special the um, charge controller indoors is showing that they're not yet charged up fully so you know you can't really trust LED lights only they're dummy lights there we have it another MPPT solar charge controller up and running in the off-grid tiny house on wheels and thank you prepper nurse for holding that for me here we go so these panels on the roof are functioning right now and there is not much power because they're still in the shade of these trees which need to go okay these guys are blocking 
my my sunlight and it is one o'clock in the afternoon and they're still in shade these guys are only just now in the sun so this is bad <sighs> Ugh, bugs um, this is bad for solar so I've got to get a, um, a wash I'm gonna get a ladder and wash these off so they uh, produce maximum power when the Sun does peek through around those trees and then get the right angles and get the adjustments going on in these but this is happy happy times here at the off-grid tiny house Now these are not yet angled, I'm just, well, I still got to move a little more. I'm just uh, giving them a wash and then we're going to angle them for the sun. I don't know what kind of goop is on these. They were out behind the house. For safety. To protect them from uh, damage. Some weird goop. Anyway. Clean them off. They're going to be producing some serious power here in a while. Again, it's like 1, 1 1.30 now in the afternoon. And you can see that I still don't have any power on the meadow. Well, the meadow is now in full sun. The solar panels behind you right now are in full sun. Just. And these are still in shade because of these two trees right here that are eventually going to have to go away. And that's just how it is. dripping on some stuff down below. I had to move it. I'm gonna finish washing that and then we'll be done with that. Oh, it's heavy. Tell me when. Do you have enough right. room? Yeah. Are you on? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm letting go. All right. I can't see a thing. Um, is that going to be stable? I wanted it, well, it is going to hold for now. Okay, it'll get us through lunch. What I wanted is it laying this way, oh, well, I'm, I'm locked high. in, right? And then across this board. So it would have been here. Oh, okay. But we can, well, we can change it, right? And then yeah. it'll be across this board. Do you think that's safe? Should be. Should be okay? Although there is a notch right here. Yeah. It's holding. Now that'll give us the uh, ability to to figure this out after lunch. Yeah. It looks cool. And it's going to stop the rain from going inside the porch. That's yeah. the other bonus. 
Yeah, yeah inside the shed. It'll, it's, it's a good overhang. Yeah. For the shed. Well, everybody, it's lunchtime, but there's that for now. I like it. I think it's going to look really cool out here. Uh, summertime, we definitely obviously want that angle. Once the sun starts shining, we're going to get some serious solar power with two charge controllers and two sets of solar panels. We're going to top off these batteries today. Melanie? Melanie is making curtains and all kinds of cute little stuff in her little craft corner of the tiny house. She made this little bow and that's going to hold the curtains back. And over here, I just went to town and bought some curtain rods, which I'm about to put up. And uh, we're going to have curtains in the tiny house and wheels. Curtains that Melanie made herself. So I've got a curtain rod hung. And, uh, I'm going to hang one of Melody's homemade curtains. She made the loops herself. She uh, sewed them on herself. She made them herself. She made everything herself. She did the stitching all herself. She took scrap material that we got. Look what she did. She did the, the stitching here. Can you see that? Put these creases in it. She did everything herself out of scrap material that she got for free at a barn sale nearby on the holiday weekend. She really put some love and effort into these. Really did a good job. Oops, I'll have to readjust that. I just got some cheap curtain rods at the dollar store for now, but we'll be putting some good ones on later when I get the wood shop set up, which is the motor home at this time. It's going to be the wood shop. And we will get the scroll saw out and make some real curtain rods. I also have a wood lathe, so we'll make some really pretty and fancy curtain rods in the future. But for now, this will do the job. Let's see how these go up, Melanie. Let's see. What is so beautiful? We've got curtains in a tiny house on wheels, Melanie. Look at that. We've got curtains. Huh? Are you happy? You should see her beaming. She's happy. Look at that. The plants make them sort of stick out a little bit, but there they are. Oh, yeah. Look, she's got little homemade bows or ribbons or whatever the not, finished yet. not done yet the little bows she made for her curtains oh there you are Melanie <laughs> that's so cute <laughs> Look at her enjoying it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice. Well, I'll hang up the other one for you now, okay? Okay. We'll get that other curtain rod up there. And eventually, once we get the wood shop, at, shop set up properly with all the power tools out there, we'll get you some beautiful curtain rods. I got the idea already how I'm going to do it. It's going to look good. Well, there it is, everybody. Melanie's second homemade curtain. All handmade from scratch. That is pretty cool, including the uh, uh, straps, the loops that hold them on. Really neat. Look how she made the folds in the curtain. She sewed in the folds and she sliced it almost all the way. and She really put some work into that. Took her a few days of time in between everything else she was doing. and Here she's got her homemade ribbons. She make them all herself using all the material and uh, Melanie, where do little buttons come from? From the bread and shower that uh, Danielle uh, gave us okay. from the design of the cake. So there's, oh right, is that where the ribbon material came from? Yes. Aha, uh -huh. Danielle will be happy to see that. Mm -hmm. So the ribbons Melanie made out of the 
material that was wrapped around a um, towel cake, a cake made out of towels. Some of you guys may remember that from the bridal shower. Danielle will certainly remember that. But there, there, there it is. That's what Melanie wanted. That's her vision come to reality. <laughs> really nice. Everybody want, said I needed a woman's touch in here. Well, there it is. <laughs> there it is. It sure is dark, though, because it's raining out right now. But she'll get those tied down and... Well, curtains in the off-grid tiny house on wheels. I've been going through my water tanks and I found a tank. Okay, there's there's two different fittings I found. And there's a small mouth fitting and a large mouth fitting. And um, sadly, the fittings I bought from China don't fit anything at all. I even tried this fitting down here. So the tanks that I, or the uh, adapters that I bought from China, well, I thought it was off Amazon, but it came from China. Um, doesn't fit anything I have anywhere at all, although it said it fits all IBC totes. Well, I don't know what country or what world that's from, but it doesn't fit anything I have. Anyway, um, I had to dig up two of the tanks with the smaller threads and the small neck so that I can use that for the water system of the tiny house on wheels because I have adapters from True Value Hardware that fit this here, but nothing else. So at least we can put two tanks out in the watershed and hook it up to the tiny house and wheels and get rolling. Hey everybody, well, 600 watts of power. We angled it into the sun. I don't remember if I showed you that on the, uh, on the um, video or not. We angled it up into the sun and then we put a, a secondary or a third one and screwed it in to protect it because it got windy today. So we had a potential of 1200 watts today I'm not sure all the containers are my survival gear I took out of the truck camper back in the day it was in the shed because we're working on the shed which I showed you just got back with a little water um, had two green and four blue that's our drinking water and uh, actually the green ones Melanie uses for um, her own self and the, um, we had four blue one is on the porch where we keep it for running water and we got this big old 235 gallon tank we're trying to wash out. We got um, water in it to soak it and then we're going to take it to the power washer tomorrow and see if we can clean that thing out fully because it's got the valve that fits our plumbing for the uh, tiny house on wheels. So I think I showed that earlier. It's been a long day and I've done a lot. But that's the valve that fits the plumbing that I've got, that I bought at the hardware store. There's only I've only got a couple of these with a small neck that has this thread. The others are a bigger thread and really odd. I don't know what it is, but anyway, hopefully we'll be able to get this in there tomorrow. I hope. 